Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this specific video, we are going to discuss a custom ensemble approach to solve machine learning use cases. Trust me guys, nowadays this kind of approach are basically or commonly used by many of the companies, by many of the data scientists. And I also tell you why this particular approach works in a proper way. Okay, now we'll try to divide this into three sections first of all. Let us just go and discuss about ensemble. Now I hope you probably may have worked with algorithm which are of ensemble kind. Now what is the example? The best example of ensemble approach is basically two examples I'd like to say. One is bagging. The other one is something called as boosting. Now in bagging, the example that I'd like to take is something called as random forest. And in boosting, I would like to specify as XGBoost, it may be ADA boost, you know, gradient boost and many more. Okay. So in this bagging and boosting approach, we basically say this particular algorithms as ensemble algorithms. Why? Understand in both the algorithms, suppose if I take an example of random forests, decision trees are used and not one decision tree, multiple decision trees are used. Similarly in boosting also decision trees are used and again I'm talking about multiple decision trees here parallel execution of the decision tree happens here sequential decision tree execution happens right so we basically call this as an ensemble approach and usually ensemble says that we can combine any number of models to get the final output and the final output is based on the voting classifier now what does this custom ensemble approach basically mean and why i'm actually creating this particular video trust me guys my previous two projects, I've actually implemented this custom ensemble approach to get some very good accuracy. You can also use this custom ensemble approach in Kaggle competition, in hacker rank, in different kind of comp competitions also. So let us try to understand with a very, very good example. So first of all, let me consider that I want to predict T crop, okay, T crop production, how much it is going to produce. I want to do that particular prediction. I know this I have given in one of the use case guys, but just try to understand. Okay, I'm just not going to consider this later. I'll give some more examples. Okay, now in this, suppose if I take an example, okay, now usually in T crop prediction and understand guys, whenever the data initially is collected, it is collected in some Hadoop architecture. So big data usually has some properties, which is called as four V's. Okay, you can actually go and search in the Google about four V's of big data. But just understand one of the V I'm going to specify the remaining three V's you can search and try to find it out. And let me see how many you'll actually write. And if you get the answer, you type it down in the comment box. It is pretty much simple. So one of the V is basically called as variety. Now, usually for any problem statement where you have variety of data. Now, in this particular T crop prediction, say understand in India, you have various region where T crops are actually grown. Okay, you have Northeast specifically many parts of the Northeast where uh, tea crops are actually grown in South India also in various parts tea crops is actually grown. Now understand one thing is that we need to find out the tea crop prediction with the help of some of the features like what is the maximum temperature, what is the maximum rainfall, minimum temperature, minimum rainfall, average rainfall, what is the soil condition, humidity condition, what type of soil is actually used, all this kind of information. Now similarly in South India also this all information will be there. And always remember, based on the location, these properties may vary a, whole, a lot. In the Northeast, sometimes we get very good rainfall. In the Western Ghats, we get huge amount of rainfall. Again, the soil may be different, right? So based on that, we need to try to find out the tea crop uh, production of a specific region right now understand one thing over here there is a huge variety of data right there's just not single same similar type of data so usually in most of the use cases that comes right it will be having a huge variety of data again okay whenever you're solving some Kaggle competitions also uh, whenever you have some use case in your company also they'll be having a huge variety of data now one thing that to focus over here is that since I told you that this data is completely dependent on location so the first step when we say custom ensemble approach we usually use the combination of we usually use the combination of two approach so that is called as clustering okay one one is basically clustering and the other one is basically called as supervised machine learning. 
supervised machine learning and I, obviously this clustering basically means unsupervised so we take the combination of we, we basically take the combination of clustering uh, that is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm and supervised machine learning algorithm now what does this basically clustering do clustering can be anything guys k-means clustering hierarchical mean clustering db scan clustering you can use any of them okay so suppose if i take this particular data i give it to my clustering algorithm i give it to my clustering algorithm and you know that in clustering algorithm what i'll get i'll get multiple groups suppose i get three groups my group one my group two and this is my group three okay so these all groups i've actually got from my clustering algorithm and you know that clustering basically means we are trying to cluster it right and this is completely an unsupervised machine learning problem okay now when we are actually getting this three group what does this basically mean what does this basically mean this basically indicates that you have three kind of data okay based on locations various locations that are actually present in india you know where the tea crops are actually produced they are having different uh, means three different kinds of varieties of features okay like suppose if i consider some of the districts in northeast may fall over here some of the district in south will may fall over here so similar kind of districts will be actually falling in this particular group okay so that is what it actually mentions you know and understand guys this data will also be very very huge okay and you cannot just depend on one single model on such a huge huge amount of data to do the prediction so we should always try to follow this particular pattern and again i'll tell you some of the disadvantages of this okay I'll, it, uh, at the end i'll be sharing you some of the disadvantages but the advantages is more when compared to the disadvantages so many of the companies and people and developers actually use this okay now once we are able to get this particular group and we know that in this group we have some specific amount of data this group based on this group we will be actually creating my model one my second group will be creating a model two and my third model will be basically creating a model three and now here is basically a supervised machine learning algorithm okay supervised machine learning algorithm it may, it may be random forest it may be xgboost it may be ada boost any kind of algorithms can be actually created based on hyperparameter based on the data of that specific group okay so this is how this particular approach actually works first of all we take this whole data apply clustering find out how many feasible number of groups we are getting based on the number of groups we create that many number of supervised machine learning models okay pretty much simple and trust me guys my past two projects have used this particular approach it is working so well because understand here what i have done and usually in in a, in a machine learning use case you have a huge amount of data you not just have small amount of data and you cannot just be dependent on one simple model okay one ml model you cannot be dependent on that there will be a lot of factors that will be actually affecting the machine learning model so usually for any use cases if you are able to follow this particular approach it will definitely give you a good result okay and trust me about this guys this is pretty much amazing uh, you'll basically understand when you are doing this okay and recently one of the project that i did for my members who have actually joined my youtube channel there i have actually followed this particular architecture to solve a problem okay and that particular project name is fishing classify okay so this is how we actually solve this particular stuff okay now for the new data also what will happen for the new data first it will pass through the clustering algorithm then it will go and say that whether it belongs to group one group two group three suppose it belongs to group three then we'll go and hit the m3 model and from this we'll get the response we'll get the output we'll get the output okay so this is how a custom ensemble approach works and pretty much simple guys pretty much simple we have just combined unsupervised machine learning technique and a supervised machine learning technique that also in multiple groups now we'll try to discuss about the disadvantages understand over here guys whenever we have one machine learning model we have to put a lot of things a lot of efforts to make that machine learning model scalable but now understand here we are having one two three four machine learning models in this approach and usually if you are trying to uh, focus on to this and try to solve this particular problem i can also do it with one machine learning model as a, as many of them actually do it right but by following this particular approach for the scalability thing i have to manage four four different machine learning models 
right now each and every machine learning model when it is deployed in the production it, it is basically four web apis right which is actually exposed to some front-end user right it may be a web app mobile app and many more things so understand there is a lot of difficulty in managing so many models and we have to create a separate pipeline for each and every model so that we can train our models continuously understand once a model is actually deployed it is always verified you know how good it is actually performing and monthly by monthly it will be actually checked up what is the accuracy that we are actually getting then after some time we again retrain our model and for this there will not only be one pipeline because we have four different kind of data we have over here if i consider three groups we have three different kind of data in this particular case so it is pretty much important that the major disadvantage is custom ensemble approach is that we need to manage a lot of things okay so yes this was a pretty much explanation about the custom ensemble approach trust me try to do try to solve any problem by using this particular approach okay and not only this guys uh, let me consider one more example which is called as fishing classifier fishing classifier okay and there are a lot of use cases which you can do okay why i'm saying you this particular approach is that guys because you are actually splitting that particular data based on that specific group of data you're actually creating these models now this particular model based on this particular data will perform well right because it has it is focused on this particular kind of group so this is what is all about this particular video so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye